in Clex PN practice exam 1. Question 1. The nurse is caring for a client with systemic lupus erythematosus SLE. The major complication associated with systemic lupus erythematosus is A. Nephritis B. Cardiomegaly C. Desquamation D. Meningitis Answer is correct. The major complication of SLE is lupus nephritis, which results in end-stage renal disease. SLE affects the musculoskeletal, integumentary, renal, nervous, and cardiovascular systems, but the major complication is renal involvement. Therefore, answers B and D are incorrect. Answer C is incorrect because the SLE produces a butterfly rash not desquamation. Question 2. Which diet is associated with an increased risk of colorectal cancer? A. Low protein, complex carbohydrates. B. High protein, simple carbohydrates. C. High fat, refined carbohydrates. D. Low carbohydrates, complex proteins. Answer C is correct. A diet that is high in fat and refined carbohydrates increases the risk of colorectal cancer. High fat content results in an increase in fecal bile acids, which facilitate carcinogenic changes. Refined carbohydrates increase the transit time of food through the gastrointestinal tract and increase the exposure time of the intestinal mucosa to cancer-causing substances. Answers A, B, and D do not relate to the question, therefore, they are incorrect. Question 3. The nurse is caring for an infant following a cleft lip repair. While comforting the infant, the nurse should avoid A. Holding the infant B. Offering a pacifier C. Providing a mobile D. Offering sterile water. Answer B is correct. The nurse should avoid giving the infant a pacifier or bottle because sucking is not permitted. Holding the infant cradled in the arms, providing a mobile, and offering sterile water using a brack feeder are permitted. Therefore, answers A. C and D are incorrect. Question 4. The physician has ordered a moxilamoxicillin 500 mg capsules for a client with esophageal viruses. The nurse can best care for the client's needs by A. Giving the medication as ordered. B. Providing extra water with the medication. C. Giving the medication with an antacid. D. Requesting an alternate form of the medication. Answer D is correct. The client with esophageal viruses can develop spontaneous bleeding from the mechanical irritation caused by taking capsules. Therefore, the nurse should request the medication in a suspension. Answer is incorrect because it does not best meet the client's needs. Answer B is incorrect because it is not the best means of preventing bleeding. Answer C is incorrect because the medications should not be given with milk or antacids. Question 5. The nurse is providing dietary instructions for a client with iron deficiency anemia. Which food is a poor source of iron? A. Tomatoes. B. Legumes. C. Dried fruits. D. Nuts. Answer is correct. 
tomatoes are a poor source of iron, although they are an excellent source of vitamin C, which increases iron absorption. Answers B, C, and D are good sources of iron, therefore, they are incorrect. Question 6. The nurse is teaching a client with Parkinson's disease ways to prevent curvatures of the spine associated with a disease. To prevent spinal flexion, the nurse should tell the client to a. Periodically lie prone without a neck pillow. b. Sleep only in dorsal recumbent position. c. Rest in supine position with his head elevated. d. Sleep on either side but keep his back straight. Answer is correct. Periodically lying in a prone position without a pillow will help prevent the flexion of the spine that occurs with Parkinson's disease. Answers B and C flex the spine, therefore, they are incorrect. Answer D is not realistic because of position changes during sleep, therefore, it is incorrect. Question 7. The nurse is planning dietary changes for a client following an episode of pancreatitis. Which diet is suitable for the client? A. Low calorie, low carbohydrate. B. High calorie, low fat. C. High protein, high fat. D. Low protein, high carbohydrate. Answer B is correct. The client recovering from pancreatitis needs a diet that is high in calories and low in fat. Answers A, C, and D are incorrect because they can increase the client's discomfort. Question 8. A client with hypothyroidism frequently complains of feeling cold. The nurse should tell the client that she will be more comfortable if she A uses an electric blanket at night b dresses in extra layers of clothing c applies a heating pad to her feet d takes a hot bath morning and evening answer b is correct Dressing in layers and using extra covering will help decrease the feeling of being cold that is experienced by the client with hypothyroidism. Decreased sensation and decreased alertness are common in the client with hypothyroidism. Therefore, the use of electric blankets and heating pads can result in burns, making answers A and C incorrect. Answer D is incorrect because the client with hypothyroidism has dry skin, and a hot bath morning and evening would make her condition worse. Question 9. A client has been hospitalized with a diagnosis of laryngeal cancer. Which factor is most significant in the development of laryngeal cancer? A. A family history of laryngeal cancer. B. Chronic inhalation of noxious fumes. C. Frequent straining of the vocal cords. D. A history of alcohol and tobacco use. Answer D is correct. A history of frequent alcohol and tobacco use is the most significant factor in the development of cancer of the larynx. Answers A, B, and C are also factors in the development of laryngeal cancer, but they are not the most significant, therefore, they are incorrect. Question 10. The nurse is completing an assessment history of a client with pernicious anemia. Which complaint differentiates pernicious anemia from other types of anemia? A. Difficulty in breathing after exertion. B. Numbness and tingling in the extremities. C. A faster than usual heart rate. D. Feelings of lightheadedness.
Answer B is correct. Numbness and tingling in the extremities is common in the client with pernicious anemia, but not those with other types of anemia. Answers A, C, and D are incorrect because they are symptoms of all types of anemia. Question 11. The chart of a client with schizophrenia states that the client has echolalia. The nurse can expect the client to A. Speak using words that rhyme. B. Repeat words or phrases used by others. C. Include irrelevant details in conversation. D. Make up new words with new meanings. Answer B is correct. The client with echolalia repeats words or phrases used by others. Answer A is incorrect because it refers to clang association. Answer C is incorrect because it refers to circumstantiality. Answer D is incorrect because it refers to neologisms. Question 12. Which early morning activity helps to reduce the symptoms associated with rheumatoid arthritis? A. Brushing the teeth. B. Drinking a glass of juice. C. Drinking a cup of coffee. D. Brushing the hair. Answer C is correct. Holding a cup of coffee or hot chocolate helps to relieve the pain and stiffness of the hands. Answers A, B, and D do not relieve the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, therefore, they are incorrect. Question 13. A newborn weighed 7 pounds at birth. At 6 months of age, the infant could be expected to weigh A. 14 pounds. B. 18 pounds. C. 25 pounds. D. 30 pounds. Answer is correct. The infant's birth weight should double by six months of age. Answers B, C, and D are incorrect because they are greater than the expected weight gain by six months of age. Question 14. A client with non-tropical sprue has an exacerbation of symptoms. Which meal selection is responsible for the recurrence of the client's symptoms? A. Tossed salad with oil and vinegar dressing. B. Baked potato with sour cream and chives. C. Cream of tomato soup and crackers. D. Mixed fruit and yogurt. Answer C is correct. The symptoms of non-tropical sprue and celiac are caused by the ingestion of gluten, which is found in wheat, oats, barley, and rye. Creamed soup and crackers contain gluten. Answers A, B, and D do not contain gluten, therefore, they are incorrect. Question 15. A client with congestive heart failure has been receiving digoxin lanoxin, which finding indicates that the medication is having a desired effect. A. Increased urinary output. B. Stabilized weight. C. Improved appetite. D. Increased pedal edema. Answer is correct. Lanoxin slows and strengthens the contraction of the heart. An increase in urinary output shows that the medication is having a desired effect by eliminating excess fluid from the body. Answer B is incorrect because the weight would decrease. Answer C might occur but is not directly related to the question, therefore, it is incorrect. Answer D is incorrect because pedal edema would decrease not increase. Question 16. 
which play activity is best suited to the gross motor skills of the toddler. A. Coloring book and crayons. B. Ball. C. Building cubes. D. Swing set. Answer B is correct. The toddler has gross motor skills suited to playing with a ball, which can be kicked forward or thrown overhand. Answers when C are incorrect because they require fine motor skills. Answer D is incorrect because the toddler lacks gross motor skills for play swing set. Question 17. The physician has ordered basalgal aluminium carbonate gel for a client with recurrent indigestion. The nurse should teach the client common side effects of the medication, which include A. Constipation B. Urinary retention C. Diarrhea D. Confusion Answer is correct. Antacids containing aluminium and calcium tend to cause constipation. Answer refers to the side effects of anticholinergic medications used to treat ulcers. Therefore, it is incorrect. Answer C refers to antacids containing magnesium. Therefore, it is incorrect. Answer D refers to dopamine antagonists used to treat ulcers. Therefore, it is incorrect. Question 18. A client is admitted with suspected abdominal aortic aneurysm, AAA. A common complaint of the client with an abdominal aortic aneurysm is A. Loss of sensation in the lower extremities. B. Back pain that lessens when standing. C. Decreased urinary output. D. Pulsations in the periumbilical area. Answer D is correct. The client with an abdominal aortic aneurysm frequently complains of pulsations or feeling my heart beat in the abdomen. Answers when C are incorrect because they occur with rupture of the aneurysm. Answer B is incorrect because back pain is not affected by changes in position. Question 19. A client is admitted with acute adrenal crisis. During the intake assessment, the nurse can expect to find that the client has A. Low blood pressure B. Slow, regular pulse C. Warm, flushed skin D. Increased urination Answer is correct. The client with acute adrenal crisis has symptoms of hypovolemia and shock. Therefore, the blood pressure would be low. Answer B is incorrect because the pulse would be rapid and irregular. Answer C is incorrect because the skin would be cool and pale. Answer D is incorrect because the urinary output would be decreased. Question 20. An elderly client is hospitalized for a transurethral prostatectomy. Which findings should be reported to the doctor immediately? A. Our urinary output of 40 to 50 cc. B. Bright red urine with many clots. C. Dark red urine with few clots. D. Requests for pain and Q for hours. Answer B is correct. Bright red bleeding with many clots indicates arterial bleeding that requires surgical intervention. Answer is within normal limits, therefore, it is incorrect. Answer C indicates venous bleeding, which can be managed by nursing intervention, therefore, it is incorrect. Answer D does not indicate excessive need for pain management that requires the doctor's attention. Therefore, 
It is incorrect. Question 21. A nine-year-old is admitted with suspected rheumatic fever. Which finding is suggestive of polymigratory arthritis? A. Irregular movements of the extremities and facial grimacing. B. Painless swelling over the extensive surfaces of the joints. C. Faint areas of red demarcation over the back and abdomen. D. Swelling, inflammation, and effusion of the joints. Answer D is correct. The child with polymigratory arthritis will exhibit swollen, painful joints. Answer B is incorrect because it describes subcutaneous nodules. Answer C is incorrect because it describes erythema marginatum. Answer A is incorrect because it describes syndrome's core. Question 22. Her child with croup is placed in a cool. High humidity tent connected to room air. The primary purpose of the tent is to A. Prevent insensible water loss. B. Provide a moist environment with oxygen at 30%. C. Prevent dehydration and reduce fever. D. Liquefy secretions and relieve laryngeal spasm. Answer D is correct. The primary reason for placing a child with croup under a mist tent is to liquefy secretions and relieve laryngeal spasms. Answer A is incorrect because it does not prevent insensible water loss. Answer B is incorrect because the oxygen concentration is too high. Answer C is incorrect because the mist tent does not prevent dehydration or reduce fever. Question 23. A client is admitted with a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. An initial assessment of the client would reveal A. Slow pulse rate, weight loss, diarrhea, and cardiac failure. B. Weight gain, lethargy, slowed speech, and decreased respiratory rate. C. Rapid pulse, constipation, and bulging eyes. D. Decreased body temperature weight loss, and increased respirations. Answer B is correct. Symptoms of hypothyroidism include weight gain, lethargy, slow speech, and decreased respirations. Answers when D do not describe symptoms associated with myxedema, therefore, they are incorrect. Answer C describes symptoms associated with Graves' disease, therefore, it is incorrect. Question 24. Which statement describes the contagious stage of Richella? A. The contagious stage has one day before the onset of the rash until the appearance of vesicles. B. The contagious stage lasts during the vesicular and crusting stages of the lesions. C. The contagious stage is from the onset of the rash until the rash disappears. D. The contagious stage has one day before the onset of the rash until all the lesions are crusted. Answer D is correct. The contagious stage of varicella begins 24 hours before the onset of the rash and lasts until all the lesions are crusted. Answers A, B, and C are inaccurate regarding the time of contagion, therefore, they are incorrect. Question 25. A client admitted to the psychiatric unit claims to be the son of God and insists that he will not be kept away from his followers. The most likely explanation for the client's delusion is A. A religious experience B. A stressful event C. Low self-esteem D. Overwhelming anxiety
Answer C is correct. Delusions of grandeur are associated with low self-esteem. Answer is incorrect because conversion is expressed as sensory or motor deficits. Answers B and C can cause an increase in the client's delusions but do not explain their purpose. Therefore, they are incorrect. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and share.